This was pop music. What happened? We've seen a decline in the prominence of real pop stars and star quality in the last half decade. In my retrospect of Rihanna's anti, I stayed how her pulling a big middle finger to the industry and giving us a very uncommercial album marked a shift and caused artists to no longer feed into the pop machine of album, promo, tour, repeat. Anti was a big marker for this, but Beyonce's 2013 self-titled album sowed the seed for the industry-wide change. Beyonce dissatisfied with the capitalist nature of the music industry with both its stakeholders and consumers participating in a culture which calls for the exploitation of the artists. People don't make albums anymore. They don't make albums. They just try to sell a bunch of little quick singles and they burn out and they put out a new one and they burn out and they put out a new one. People don't even listen to a body of work anymore. Released as a visual album in the middle of the tracking week without no promo or big rollout, the incredible sales of it selling 830,000 units worldwide in the first three days caused the global record industry to change the start of the tracking week from Tuesday to Friday. Since then, we've seen a high frequency of artists refusing to engage with mass media to perform well commercially. To see the impact of albums like this to where we are now, I think it's important to look at who for me are the last remaining vanguards of pop, Ariana Grande and Taylor Swift. And to find the answers to this, we have to look at hip hop and its commercial success, which has really been the true reigning genre of the 21st century, with it being, with it being the most popular genre consumed in the US since 2017. Ariana's reigning pop goal run was arguably during 2000 2018 to 19, where she released two albums in quick succession, 2018 Sweet Nut and 2019 Thank You Next. This was inspired by her desire to conform with male rap. My dream has always been to be, obviously not a rapper, but like to put out music in a way a rapper does. I feel like there are certain standards that pop women are held to that men aren't. We have to do the teaser before the single, then do the single, then wait to do the pre-order and then and radio has to impact before the video and we have to do the discount on the day and all this shit. Hip hop artists, particularly now, do seem to be thriving due to the quantity and volume of their music. Drake in his own right is the biggest pop star alive and that's because he always keeps his audience fed. Like other rappers with both solo and feature releases, really showed the potency in keeping the audience fed. But also with a specific younger demographic, these artists have the perfect audience to really capitalize on streaming. I'm asked Ariana's rapper approach with those two albums worked well for her. Taylor Swift was really the one paying attention and really struck gold with replicating this formula. With Big Machine Records owning and then selling Taylor Swift's masters to her first six albums to Scooter Born in 2019, Taylor Swift capitalised on her misfortune and began re-recording all six of those stolen albums. At the same time, she hit an artistic tribe with their eighth and ninth studio albums, Folklore and Evermore, releasing them in quick succession. Now she has released her 10th studio album, Midnight's, and three Taylor's versions of her previous albums. So in the space of three years, she has released six new albums, and this is where intersectional theory plays a part, because her audience, which skews more white and female, don't just give her strong streaming power but physical purchasing power with Taylor Swift's audience purchasing multiple vinyls and CDs on release a style of fan culture that hip hop has really struggled to replicate. This has allowed Taylor Swift to absolutely dominate the music industry over the past few years and has allowed her to take great ownership over her music and revenue. But without that volume of music and not having the combined physical and streaming power, pop stars are commercially struggling. There has been a big headline this year that there's been no hip hop number ones this entire year until the release of Lil Uzi Vert's Pink Tape. And whilst this is an irresistible headline to create, what about the death of the Western pop star? If I was to create a timeline of the last 10 Western pop stars that charted at number one on the Billboard 200. We have Taylor Swift with six albums, Harry Styles, Adele, Ed Sheeran, Billie Eilish, Olivia Rodrigo, Justin Bieber, Shawn Mendes, Ariana Grande, and Lady Gaga. Now, not going one doesn't mean failure. It is indicative that there is something going on where the industry is doing a poor job or having a hard time investing in viable and new talent, with Olivia Rodrigo being the exception. But I also do think music is a reflection of the time. And one, streaming is the dominant form of music consumption. Both record labels and artists are at a lose-lose situation and to strike hard and make real money it requires a lot of investment and numbers to make a meaningful mark on streaming and while singles can pay off very quickly albums are more at risk and have a high potential of failure countless albums you've seen fumble or perform softly despite having a successful single attached to it so whilst the pop stars that we love and know have reduced their output they often get significant investment because they are mostly guaranteed to perform well often with minimal promotion I remember, we are also in a global cost of living crisis, which I think adds an important context because we are all broke. Hide the money, y'all. There's poor people around. <laughs>
However, if you have a strong audience and socioeconomic factors play a part because, because it seems with a more broad slash white appeal, the more likely your audience will include a percentage that has enough disposable income to support artists with physical releases like, like CDs and vinyl, which explains the dominance of both Taylor Swift and Morgan Wallet, who has been bullying both the Hot 100 and 200 with his album One Thing at a Time. Remember, one stream is a disgusting fraction of an actual single or album unit, so it really is a losing game from there for all other artists who have young audiences or were made up of marginalized groups who receive who receive the brunt of the cost of living crisis the hardest. Therefore, they can't help their favorite artists to ensure their hard labor and efforts don't go to waste. And this is why stand culture, despite its many pitfalls, is really helping the music industry. A mass it could kind of be seen as chart manipulation tactics. But for example, the Barb's mass buying Nicki Minaj's music not only helps Nicki, but the entire female rap game. And it's also why Billboard's recent rule change, which no longer count direct to consumer website digital sales might actually result in a complete demise in popular music which will only go to bring us further into the depths of the capitalistic hellhole we live in what can we do not a lot but i do feel like we have lost the importance of collective action and one thing that can go mouse is buying music albums are a bit more expensive but at least spending a pound on itunes or amazon on a new song every week can create a ripple effect which sees a more sustainable and fruitful music industry emerge. So join me in my efforts to become a more ethical and conscious media consumer and follow me for more pop culture discourse and knowledge. With your broke ass. <laughs> so that's actually something I've been posting on my TikTok page at St. Adamson. I've tried with shorts. I really have tried with shorts, but the, right now I just don't like it very much. The one minute thing doesn't work and just some of the functionality and i don't really think it's for my type of content um which is a, a bit more long form so on tiktok you'll find like two to three minutes um of pop culture knowledge and discourse on there so that's great i also want to come in here and say thank you for like it's been a year since i posted my first video on this youtube channel um and just seeing how far it's come how much further i have to go uh, it's been incredibly encouraging, just all the supports in the little community um, I've been building. I think I definitely want to be in this second year. That's crazy. In this second year, I definitely want to be a bit more intentional with building and fostering community on here. So I'm going to be here more. Um, and then also you'll see like a lot of my TikTok content, which I'm making, which is again more short form, will eventually kind of all migrate over here. Um, but here will be for like the more longer, uh, well thought out video uh essays which i'm actually about to start filming one which is why i'm dressed like a dune character the video's got nothing to do with dune um but it's right here i could flip it but i can't so yeah that's in the works that's coming thank you subscribe like follow my tiktok and my instagram see i'm becoming more like digestible my instagram is here so yeah um i probably need to slap a hat one but actually like no um, and yeah, so I'll see you in my next vid.